Um, I have had the opportunity to travel all around, and I have, it's my first time speaking in Houston, where I live. Um, this is the title of my talk: is intersection of artificial intelligence, mobile devices, and healthcare. And uh, my background is I'm a physician, ophthalmologist, uh, retina specialist, a mathematician, a computer scientist, and a full stack AI engineer. And at no charge, I can throw in physicist and uh, computational neuroscientist in there for you as well. Um, what motivated me in this field to actually start to work in AI is the lack of access to care uh, in my field, okay? Uh, there are less than 3,000 retina specialists in the US, and believe it or not, people are going blind right here in America, the world's richest country. And for me, that was compelling enough that I took a hiatus from my job uh, earlier this year in January, and I started to uh, work on a certain problem uh, in being able to autonomously diagnose uh, retinal disease, okay? Uh, when you go to a country like Nigeria, where I was born, you're talking about a population of 200 million people and less than 10 trained retina specialists. So it's a big global crisis, and AI uh, can produce us some answers. So we're still a startup, we're a small company, right? And uh, for startups, uh, I know there are a few startups in the room, really the big or people that are thinking about jumping in, you know, more importantly, uh, you need certain things. You need capability, you need commitment, you need courage, and you need capital. Uh, one can be deficient in one of these areas, but you need some measure of all of that uh, to be able to go forward, because it's quite a venture. Uh, AI, what exactly is it, right? Most, all, almost all of us in the room are practitioners to some degree or the other. It's been all over the news. You know, there's been a lot of hype. Uh, in my view, you know, AI is, what, what do you guys see up here? What's that picture? We're in Houston, so I expect people to know what I'm looking at. Mango, mango. good. And really, what you see there is you see some green, some yellow mangoes, right? And you can train an AI algorithm very easily, a machine learning algorithm, to do um, image classification and to say, this one is uh, yellow and that one is green, and you can sort them. And I challenge you to accept that that is the central problem of AI. It's really a problem of taking labels, which is context from our various domains, and then training algorithms to extract actionable intelligence you know, off of that. And that's the problem that we saw all through yesterday, whether it was eBay talking or Facebook or, or uh, GM or whatever, it's, it has been the exact same problem. In my case, I'm a retina specialist, and what you have up there is a picture of the retina. That's the optic nerve. It goes straight into the brain where the computing is done and visual perception occurs. You see blood vessels emanating out of there and supplying that. And the central part of that is called the, what's in the middle right there, that circle? Anybody know? Macula. It's macula, good, and the fovea. And so this is, it's very important for us to be able to see because this is basically the sensor device that takes all the images and then goes to the brain. That was a, a picture of a normal retina. Well, but what you see on the left there is a diseased retina. So this is a person who was minding their own business and unfortunately, suddenly there was blood in the middle of their vision and the person uh, couldn't see, you know, due to the blurriness. And this type of problem happens all the time in the US and there are not enough trained people to, to diagnose and to treat this. So basically there's a massive, massive problem of shortage of care. In here in America, that problem is growing, okay? The Association of American Medical Colleges put out a report this year that projected that in 2030, that's a short 12 years from now, we're going to have a shortfall of 172,000 physicians, most of whom would be specialists. And basically, we need AI. If you're doing AI, you're absolutely in the right field. The problem that I told you about there is a big one. This is a patient who has a choroidal neovascular membrane, secondary to uh, presumed ocular histoplasmosis syndrome, and they need treatment, okay? When a diagnosis like this is made, something needs to be done, and in this case, an injection uh, needs to be uh, uh, so given to this patient to save their vision. This is a picture of me in my clinic, here. and when you see something like of this sort, uh, you have to act quickly. And so for those of you who are squeamish, you can close your eyes, because uh, when we see something like this, we have to move quickly and do an eye injection and put the patient on a regimen that then saves their vision. Without that, people go blind, all right? So there's uh, betadine. You have to sterilize it, make sure that infections don't get in the eye. And then with precision, you have very little room for error, right? So that's about 3.5 millimeters from the limbus. I make that uh, mark and then go in with the injection. Hold still, sir. Okay. 
And this is relatively new technology. This, uh, this uh, treatment was called anti-VEGFs. were only available starting in 2005. Uh, and so the number of people whose vision have been saved is quite large as a result of this. So what happens in healthcare? What's the simple story? You make a diagnosis, you do a treatment, right? There are not enough people trained in how to do the diagnosis. There are not enough specialists. That problem is worse than we need AI. And when you have a picture like this, this is called an OCT scan and a fundus photograph, the pictures underneath, what you see there is there's fluid underneath the retina and there are those bumps. Those are hallmarks. Those are features, to use engineering terms, that are telltale signs. The salient features to tell you this patient has something. And I'll, I'll put it to you that over 90% by volume of retinal pathology has these two features, intraretinal fluid or subretinal fluid, as, as hallmarks. So recognizing that, what I did is I said, you know what, I've got to solve this problem. I spun up a startup and went ahead and built an AI system that can autonomously screen for these things and diagnose them. It's, it was the first in the world. It was a uh, small startup. I hadn't raised any money. I self-funded the entire thing, and I coded the whole thing up, both in the Android as well as in the iOS, trained it in Keras, TensorFlow, hosted it in the cloud, uh, and bam. And uh, we had the world's first AI app. And here's a demo of it. Basically, what it does is you have the app, you point it at the picture, and take a picture of a picture that goes into the cloud, inference occurs, and you get your response uh, back. And this is something that is physician-facing or basically care provider facing. So that's one aspect of our business, is we want to provide assist devices that can help physicians or care providers of various levels of training make the right diagnosis. On the other side of this, we are also building systems that are fully autonomous, which would be sitting inside of a primary care physician's office, and off, and off of that, just a picture of the eye would be able to diagnose things like Alzheimer's disease, cardiovascular risk, uh, diabetes, and stratify. Uh, going forward. So we've made a heck of a splash uh, for a company this young. And this is the simple architecture, is, you know, what I showed you there, you take a picture that goes into the cloud, inference occurs, bam, and you get an answer right back. And this is a very viable, powerful technology in our currently connected and increasingly connected world, right? Now we're going into 5G, and you have, I mean, anywhere you go in the world, you have, everybody has a cell phone. Basically, cell phone penetration for people under the age of 25 is hitting 90% uh, for most of the world. So that's awesome, and it presents us a great opportunity to do some amazing stuff. Again, what's my why, what's my reason for doing all of this uh, is really an opportunity to make a real dent uh, in the universe in terms of where people have problems, where there hasn't been access to care, uh, we're truly in a position to make a difference there. Uh, and the secondary reason for my why is I enjoy doing this. I love this stuff. I love math. I love computing. I love coding. I love taking care of patients. I love patient care. And being able to meld all those things together uh, has been a unique blessing and a privilege. Um, for people thinking about doing a startup, I'll say just keep in mind, always be raising the human capital, right? What you see is, what you always hear is always be raising capital, but capital is really a spectrum of both human and, uh, and financial. I've had the opportunity to be on the advisory board of two of the largest AI and data science uh, groups in Africa. That's Data Science Nigeria, as well as AI Expo Africa. And there are a lot of young people there and a lot of excitement. It's very wonderful. Don't neglect your family. Don't eat ramen noodles and don't sleep on the floor. You can eat ramen noodles if you like it, but that's not a prerequisite for having a startup. Uh, I've had the flexibility to spend actually more time with my family uh, as opposed to less, and that's been awesome, and that's kept, kept me insane and prevented me from going insane. I'm, gr <laughs> I'm grateful to my uh, collaborators. We're testing this in a multi-center trial retrospective uh, image analysis study with board-certified ophthalmologists around the country, around the U.S., and we have some uh, amazing accuracies coming through uh, north of 90 percent. We're going to be able to push that north of 97 percent in terms of our sensitivities and specificities uh, this year uh, with our new partnerships uh, with Google Cloud. Uh, et cetera. Uh, that's my contact information. Uh, if you are interested in any of this uh, and want to connect, uh, please take that down and uh, let me know. Thank you. And questions?